Hello guys and welcome back to another video. It's time to add scaffolding to our project, which will enable us to generate controllers and views from our model classes. So this will save us a lot of time. Let's see if we can get it to work. In Visual Studio, we are going to need to import two packages using NuGet. So let's right click the project, manage NuGet packages, and then see if we can find them. Uh, so we need Microsoft Visual Studio Web Code Generation. And then we have some packages to choose from. And we need this one. So let's try to install it and see what happens. And it gives us an error. So the NuGet interface by itself doesn't tell us much about what went wrong here, but we could try to use the package manager console to install the same package and see if we get a more explicit error message. So I'm just going to copy this name and say install package dash pre and see what happens. Ah, and now it's actually telling us what's going wrong. So one of the dependencies, Microsoft.Composition, is not compatible with the .NET Core app. It does support another platform, so we can sort of add this as a fallback option to enable us to install this package. Now this is not an easy or straightforward thing to do, but let's try it anyway. We can right click the project and say edit the CSProy file. And then we get an XML file, which basically contains our project dependencies and some configuration stuff. So here are the dependencies, basically the NuGet packages, and we can add some configuration here. So what do we need? We need to specify a package target fallback and specifically this one. So let's try it out. Let's add another property group. See if we have the package to, uh, target fallback option. No, we don't. Let's try it anyway and then specify what we need. Um, so this is done a little tricky. Dollar sign. And a semicolon, and then we can add this uh, stuff that it needs. And another semicolon. And now we have specified that this is sort of our fallback option. I'm not sure what it even means, but I'm guessing that this dependency does require .NET 4.5 to run. It won't run on the .NET Core by itself. Now it is only the code generator and not our actual website, so it doesn't really matter as we are developing on Windows anyway. So now that we've added this, let's save. Yes. And then let's try to install this package again. And it seems to have worked. We don't get this error. And it's asking us to reload the project file. And yes, we want to reload it. Okay, so we need one more package. So in NuGet, we also need the code generation tools. And that's this one, I think. So let's install it. And now there is some strange thing going on with the version here because it says 110 preview 4. But here it says latest pre-release MS build 2 final. And this is the one we actually want because this one is not working as far as I know. So I'm going to install this one. All right, now let's see if we can do scaffolding. So if we right click somewhere, doesn't matter where, we now have the option for a new scaffolded item. And we can use this, for example, to generate a view. So let's quickly generate a view and then delete it just to see if it works. So add new scaffolded item. And suppose we want a view. Let's make it a details view. So it's basically a read only form with all of the data in our class and let's pick our profile class that we just created in the previous video and then the data context we don't really need to specify it but I'm doing it anyway 
and click add and now we get an error now i actually knew this was going to happen so sorry for that the question is how to fix this so let's cancel out of this and go back to editing our project file now what's the problem it has imported our last package just as a package reference but it hasn't made uh, the stuff inside it available for visual studio to use so let's resize this for a bit what we actually need is not a package reference but a dotnet cli tool reference so we can add it below let's add a new item group and then we have the dotnet cli tool reference and then we just copy this into here and close the tag we can get rid of this one and now it will actually import it as a tool for visual studio to use so let's try doing some scaffolding again add new scaffolded item mvc view details profile and hit add it takes a few seconds and we get another error object reference was not set to an instance of an object so maybe we need to rebuild the project first let's try this and try scaffolding again details profile application db context and this time it actually worked it has generated a view with fields for all the properties in the profile class and we cannot just generate fields we can generate entire controllers with all the views they need so let's do that just to try it out let's remove this one okay and then under controllers we will add a new scaffolded item and we will pick the mvc controller with views using entity framework hit add pick our profile model class our default application db context class and let's call it profile controller and then hit add and this has generated our controller with several action methods the index method, details, create, edit, and delete. It has also generated views for all of these action methods. In the profile folder, we can see views for all of these methods. So for example, index will show a table with a list of profiles in our database. Now this is not exactly what we need for profiles, but we can use it as a basis to work from Let's see if it actually works. So let's run this. And our controller was named profile controller, which means that this thing is available under slash profile. And this is our list of profiles. Now there's nothing in there yet, but let's save fixing all this to work the way we want for our next video. So I hope you succeeded in adding scaffolding to your own project. If you didn't, then please leave a comment in the comments. Uh, thanks for watching again and hope to see you again next time.